The start and finish of COVID has created a disaster in the Canadian housing market. Home prices are now matching the mercury this summer. Housing is heating up. A couple months, um, there's been an uptick. Rents are still crazy expensive. 7% mortgage rates. Dropped affordability to an all-time low. With low inventory and influx of buyers soaring prices not only for tenants but also homeowners, 8.1% inflation year over year, and now high interest rates? The kind we haven't seen in the last two decades. And regardless, the race to buy a new home shows no signs of slowing down. I mean, it does have to come to an end, right? What could that look like? Well, you see, to understand the full story, we have to go back in time and see what really started it all. The COVID-19 pandemic struck like an unforgiving storm, leaving destruction in its wake. Businesses were shattered, jobs were lost, and the destruction was beyond anything ever imagined. I myself was part of the equation. Among many other Canadians who were struggling to simply make ends meet, it's estimated we have lost over 8.5 trillion as a world fighting this pandemic. To put that into perspective, Canada alone spent little over $512 billion. That is more than double what we've spent in World War II. We were practically drift feeding ourselves from savings we've gathered up over years, if not decades. And now prices are up the roof, not only for real estate, but gas, food, and everything you can possibly imagine. Let alone the destruction that was left behind. You probably remember the number of times we were using a disposable mask like this one, not knowing how this would impact our pollution and waste footprint. Just in 2020, we used a total of 52 billion disposable masks. In fact, we had more disposable masks in our ocean that year compared to plastic bottles or diapers. It's estimated these masks will take more than 450 years to decompose just sitting in our oceans for the next four to five generations. I should probably pick that up. So the point here is, there's definitely a lot more damage created outside of real estate, and the reflex could take a lot longer than we actually imagined. It's safe to say, in the long run, we have lost quite a lot into this battle. However, has the pandemic started losing grip? Like a ray of sunshine, the vaccine came by, saving us all. Well, kind of. I'll get back to that. Well, either ways, we survived. But what truly survived was the birth of this new era of remote work. There's a new normal and we're never going back to people showing up in the office. Having that ability to change your schedule and move around uh, to be able to take care of the needs of the family is very important. This chart shows exactly what numbers look like pre-pandemic and what they look like now. Remote work is changing our working culture and it kind of is the new normal. Studies have found nearly 40% of all Canadian jobs from educational, financial, scientific, can provide the same level of services working from home. A survey done by Stats Canada found 26% of all Canadian employees, which is 5 million people, 4.6 million to be exact, worked from home, compared to only 9% working from home pre-pandemic. And of course, you might be thinking, Mohit, working from home is great. I save so much travel time. Some would even argue it's good for their health. You get to spend more time for yourself, eating healthy. Maybe not all of us, but you get more time for working out, for family, kids. But the true problem here is space. As we move into an era of spending more time working from home, we need more space perhaps a dedicated home office. And of course, if you're a husband and wife both working from home, now you need two separate spaces. Great. Working from home is a fairly new concept. We didn't see a lot of home offices before the pandemic. Our lifestyle is changing. With us spending more time at our home, we want it to look nicer, a better kitchen, a bigger layout, and the list goes on and on and on. To no surprise, all of that comes at a cost. A very, very, very hefty cost. While we were outside adjusting to the new lifestyle and thinking about all those future moves, we were not alone. To accompany us, we had a surge of foreign investors looking for opportunities in the great Western Canada. Just throwing money left and right. Uh, this isn't real money. I 
I don't have that kind of cash. While some saw it as a problem, others saw it as an opportunity. Investors are more qualified. Uh, they are able to make the purchase because uh, they're financially more secure. Uh, a lot of first-time buyers lose out because of that. It's safe to say not all investors were foreign. We had a lot of local investors dumping their money into Canadian real estate. Why, you may ask? With the change in consumer demands and needs, investors saw a great opportunity to buy and flip. We started seeing homes from 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, all these older homes being transformed into mega mansions and a modern dream home. Go for a drive in any metro city and you'll see countless infills, countless development projects all over these older communities. Anything our savvy investors couldn't flip, they'll just rent it out. And with a little bit of skin in the game, interest rates being super low at that time, nothing was really stopping them. For an average buyer, making the word affordability a word of the past. In major cities like Toronto, Montreal, Vancouver, and now even Calgary. The city I'm from. Matter of fact, me as a realtor here in Calgary, I've seen countless moves myself. Not only from end users, but also investors. Simply because prices in their cities were getting out of reach. The number of buyers started piling up. Homes were selling quick, sometimes before they could even be viewed. Actual prospect buyers found themselves waiting in long, long lines simply to view a property for sale. This for sale sign was like a gold mine for so many buyers. Creating bidding wars, prices going up every single week and demand growing every single day. On the other hand, sellers were hesitant to put their house on the market as they couldn't find a suitable place to move to, further worsening the supply shortage. Like, I can't even count how many times I myself was out looking at properties with a client just to find out the home was sold before we even got a chance to look at it. Like, imagine, we're inside the home, still looking at the property, with a pool of buyers still waiting outside for their turn, and someone already put in an offer so strong the seller just couldn't decline. And most likely without even looking at the property. The battle between supply and demand is nothing new in Canadian history. Whenever demand outpaces supply, prices surge, creating an extremely unaffordable housing market. The real issue is further compounded by Canada's significant level of immigration, adding on to the ever-growing pool of potential homeowners and current tenants. I mean, Canada is strong on immigration, no doubt. Roughly 75% of Canadian population comes from immigration. Immigrants count over 36% of physicians, 33% business owners, and 41% engineers. Just in the last couple of years, Canada welcomed a little over 1.3 million permanent residents, breaking all Canadian records. Besides that, we have more people coming in Canada from student visas, work permits, and even visitor visas, who all need a roof over their head increasing the desire of investors to hold on to more properties. And result, the rental prices are at all time high. The Canadian government has recognized the urgency and has taken steps to address it. Various measures have already been implied, including a foreign buyer ban, higher tax implications for investors, aiming to give Canadian citizens a fair chance in the housing market. Additionally, both provincial and the federal government have invested substantial money into promoting home ownership commonly referred to as the Western Dream. The government's NHS program plans to spend little over $82 billion in the next 10 years. You see, all that on paper sounds very promising. We know the problem and it looks like we are pouring money into it. But for some reason, it's still not enough. It's like a problem with really no problem. Just build more houses. So why aren't we? I mean, the problem is definitely not land. Canada is the second largest country in the world and 80% of our land is still not being used. With it being this cold, we still have two deserts. Yeah, that's right. One in British Columbia, the Okanagan Desert, and the second one in North Saskatchewan called the Athabasca Sand Dunes. I hope that's how you say it. What we also have is a lot of greenery and a lot of wildlife. Little over 400 million hectares of forest here in Canada. 
That's 10% of the world's forest. We Canadians have national parks that are bigger than countries like Denmark and Switzerland. I think you get the point. Building more houses appears to be a straightforward solution. However, new challenges emerge in terms of entrepreneurship, infrastructure, and most critically, labor and material shortage. And when you're talking about a piece of plywood, they used to cost $9, now it costs $52. The cost of raw materials has skyrocketed. The price of lumber has gone up more than 320% last year. Spikes have also been seen in copper and PVC piping. The rapid demand for housing has outstripped the ability of the housing industry to keep pace, at least so far. Just in Calgary alone, we have almost 28 communities still under development and almost 15 brand new communities coming up and is still not enough. According to a report by RBC, affordability is the worst in 31 years. The average value of a dwelling in Canada has shot up to $780,000, which is about $600,000 US dollars. That compares to only about $300,000 just south of the border. That's a 23% increase from the previous year. As interest rates climb, uncertainty looms all over Canada. Will the race to buy a new home reach its peak? Or will the market find this the new normal? Government interventions, high demand, and a shortage of labor and material. Despite the chaos, Canadians remain hopeful about owning a home. Policymakers are working hard to find a solution. And we together can create a sustainable future for the country.